Saginaw facility. If you fill your view, this call is from a collection facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Hello. What's up with you, bro? Okay. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right. Can you tell us where you're from, how old you are, and um, how long you've been down? My name is uh, James Washington. I've been locked up 23 years, and I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. And you came down when, uh, how old were you? I came down when I was 17 years old. Oh, 10 to the age of 17. What, um, how much time did you come down with? When I first came to prison, Back in 1999, I was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, plus two years. Well, when you got that time, how did you feel? Did you ever feel like, you know, maybe it's a, it's a chance you get out, or did you accept the fact that, hey, I might be in here the rest of my life? I didn't hear the question. I said, when you came down, did you feel like that you had a chance to get out, win your appeal or anything, or did you feel like, hey, man, my life might be over with? point did your uh, thinking change and why? Okay, I said at what point did your thinking change and why? Did you get a hold of some books, law library, what was it? I will say this, 
you get nuggets along the way, because there was people that said things to me in prison, but when you're on survival mode, you're not really listening to the good advice because it can only go so far. But I had people that used to encourage me to go to the law library. I had people that used to try to lead me in a, in a good direction, but you got to be suspicious even about that. So it was, it was like when I lost my mother and I was in the hole, that, that, and that, being in that situation and not really as a young person knowing how to grieve and knowing how to be emotional, it changed the direction of my life because it broke me down and, and things was different for me because I no longer had a support system. I no longer had the one person that I thought that would be there with me forever. You know, and I never thought that I'd be in a position where she wouldn't be here. And, you know, I felt like alone. So I had to it just made me start from scratch. Okay, for the people that's at risk, that's going to listen to this, uh, how many of your friends that you was in the streets with, hanging with every day, fighting for, how many of them was there for you? Okay. For the at risk youth that might listen to this and the ones that are, how many people were there for you that you was running the streets with every day? How many people were what? That you grew up with, that you you came up with, that you was running the streets with. How many of them were there for you doing your bit? How many were there for me or did, you, I, did I bump into in prison? No, that was there for you, like, sending you mail, money, so on and so forth. Oh, man. You know, none. Like, when I came to prison, I didn't get mail from people I hung with. I got mail from the lady across the street family who waved at me every time they went into their house and made groceries. Like, the people that I knew, the people that I was uh, out there sacrificing my life with, the people that I was out there doing things for with, the hood, all that, oh, it wasn't none of that. And, um, it was strangers, to be truthful with you, that was there for me. And it was kind of uncomfortable because I, I think I had an expectation that the hmm. people that I was, that was in my life was like, they ride, they ride or die, they was going to be there with me. And and I was, I was like, you have a, like I had a couple of female friends that they stayed around, you know, with the male. But as far as the, the, the people that I was out there with the most, and I, I, none of them, none of them was there. And it's still like that even to this day. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's probably. I think every once in a while, though, like you would get a letter from somebody out the blue or JPEG. But as far as like actually being there for you, moral support, you know, only person I really had was my mother. To be truthful with you. And then I had uh, the, the Miss Kane. She was from across the street. And her and her family, uh, they, they, they just rocked with me. And it gave me a lot of moral support to get like a letter from them, like once a week, uh, a car, a, a, a prayer in the mail, you know, things like that. But nobody I was with, it wasn't, no, I wasn't, hell, to be honest with you, relatives wasn't even around for whatever reason. And, you know, they wasn't even around, you know. Um, exactly. So it was, it was, it was tough. So, so to backtrack a little bit. Uh, I noticed that you took your particular case to trial. Did they force you to take it to trial, or was that just a conscious decision to do? You say, you say something about the sentencing? Okay, yeah, yeah. You going to trial, was that a conscious decision, or did they force you to do it? My lawyer, when I first got locked up, my lawyer, they were saying, you, you didn't make a statement. That's good, that's good. And then... So I, I used to write my lawyer and say, well, look, let me help out with the case. Tell me what's going on. And he, one day he came up there to visit me. He just was like, hey, hey, what are, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Now, you got to keep in mind, I'm a 17-year-old teenager facing life without parole. And I don't even know this at the time, but he, he, he really, like, told me, he asked me what I'm going to do. And I was like, you the lawyer. Like, what you going to do? And we kind of was like in an arguing match. And I, and I told him, I said, okay, well, give me all my paperwork, and then I'll figure it out. He, I can't give you your paperwork. But he didn't, to me, he didn't present a defense. So my only option was to 
say I'm going to trial because as a 17 year old, this is what I heard in rap songs. This is what I saw on TV. So it wasn't a, a, a decision I made knowingly. It was more like, I'm, on, I'm familiar with how this go on TV. I'm familiar with what I hear in the raps. So this is the best decision for me because it was the only decision that I knew of. Mm. Did they did they offer you any pleas? To my knowledge, I never was offered a plea. I remember the detectives came and talked to me and asked me to talk to him, which I refused. And he told me that since I don't want to talk to him, then I'm gonna be charged with uh with uh, first degree murder, and I'm a you gonna spend the rest of your life in prison since you don't want to talk to me. You so, know. I said, well, talk to my attorney. He said, oh, you know, we had, we had another artery match, you know. But again, my only defense was what I heard in the rap music and what I saw on TV, like just watching shows like SVSU, the SV, SVU, like police shows. Right. You know, watching police shows on TV, you know, you don't, you think you still pick up, as a, at least as a kid, I picked up, like, read me my Miranda rights and that kind of stuff, but I didn't know what I was talking about. Exactly. Now, now going through that that process, when you look back on it, would you have played out or no? If I would have, if they would have offered me a, a plea, yes, I probably would have. I would have took it because I didn't have a defense, but I didn't know of no plea. I definitely would have took a plea. Now, now, uh, I, I guess they passed the law that. People 17 and under can't be sentenced to natural life without parole. But did they offer explanation why they can still give you 40 years? See, this is the thing about the law. It, it, it didn't stop us from being sentenced to natural life. It just stopped us from being sentenced to mandatory, which means that judges have to have a, a second option available, but you can still get life in prison without the possibility of parole in Michigan. And, um, you know, as time went on and, and the Miller case came down in 2012 and then Montgomery came down in 2015, United States Supreme Court cases that actually changed the laws that uh, allowed us to be resentenced. Um, I was one of the fortunate ones to get a resentence. And when I got a resentence, it was, I think it was 2018, like a week after my birthday, and, you know, I was kind of excited because on one end, you know, like, we not in court. We, we basically in court because it's a blessing to me from God that we was able to get resistance in the first place. But we not in court because we did something wrong. We in the court because the judges and those who have been sentencing juveniles under this particular style of sentence, the court said it was unconstitutional. So... I think for me, my initial reaction was like, they immediately put the victim's family and the, and, um, the people who committed the crimes against each other instead of, you know, like, uh, what they call uh, restorative justice, like sitting people down. Because you got to think, I got resentenced after I've been locked up for 19 years, so I'm a different person, you know. And instead, like, so, so for me, my county was sued by a law firm in Chicago, and I had an attorney where we would get these status hearings, but eventually I was resentenced. And um, when I got resentenced, I went in court. You know, we cannot, you know, take away from the seriousness, the seriousness of it. You have one minute remaining. You know, I took a man in life, and I'm very remorseful for that. And I'm, I understand now as a and that, you know, me, me doing that wasn't worth it. And I had no right to take nobody life. And when I went to court and I got resentenced, I expressed that to his family and I was able to um, get a resentence. And I also walked in court from the moment I had when I was 25 years old from being in the hole, having that moment in the hole where I lost my mother and I I had a moment where I made a decision to go in a different direction from 
maturity and a lot of other factors that played a role in it. But I hadn't caught a major misconduct in prison since that day. Wow. I had over 40 some certificates. Uh, I have been a mentor, mentoring at risk teens in the, in the community in which I damaged. Thank you for using GTL.